Hello everyone, Future Frank here. Before we begin the video, I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry for how long this video is taken to upload. It's about two days late now, and that's because it took it, my video wouldn't upload from my editing app onto my camera roll so that I could put it on YouTube from there. But I've done it now, and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Hello, wonderful people of the internet. Today's video is a bit of a weird one because I still haven't finished the book I'm currently reading, which is Ordeal by Innoc Innocence by Agatha Christie, and I know I've said it multiple times now that it will be finished by the next video, which are already gone now, I've already made the next video, and still I haven't made a review. But I can guarantee, I can guarantee that I will have a review for you by the next video. So to tell you over, I thought I'd make this. Now what is this? I... It's it's just a chat, really, because I've already done two tag videos. I've already done a movie review. So I'm fresh out of, you know, the conventional ideas. So I thought I'd just talk about the bookish things that I really enjoy. So onto the elephant in the room. Why the heck am I holding this? Now, in case you didn't know, this is a Gandalf staff. It's a replica from the um, movie adap adaption of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's a trilogy of films. And you probably know if you've been around my channel for a while that I love those books, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, I'm all over them. They're excellent. But what you probably don't know, whether you're new to the channel or even though it's only a month old, if you've been here since the beginning, is that I love memorabilia. Now, the only hints at this prior to now um, are the pop vinyls that I've got scattered around. You know, you can see the Balrog here, Treebeard off in the corner there and Harry, Voldemort, and the start of Hagrid there. But I do love to collect replicas of, you know, props and objects from the books and movies that I love. I've got Harry Potter ones to my left and right. I've got about 13 of them. I've got um, a Harley Quinn baseball bat and a few other little trinkets. And I don't know, I just love them. They make me feel really happy to see because they remind me of how much I enjoyed the things that they're from. For, um, so whenever I look at this, I think about all the fond memories that I have of when I first read Lord of the Rings. And Lord of the Rings is actually the reason why I met one of my closest friends, whose name I won't mention for obvious reasons. But you know, the Lord of the Rings is the reason I bonded with them, and so I have some very fond memories of it. Okay, so on to the next thing that I love. I'm just going to go and put this thing away. It is huge. And look at that, it carries on for ages. But... Okay, so the next thing I love, you probably already know if you've watched a few of my videos, and it's not Lord of the Rings, I'll, I've sort of already said that, I won't bore you, although I might bring it up later, is The Shining by Stephen King. Now, I'm having a bit of a debate at the moment whether this is my favourite book, but I can definitely stand by the fact that it's in my top three. It's it's really, really well written. Stephen King is an excellent writer. I absolutely love his writing style and he's very much an inspiration for me as a young writer, which I'm sure I'm sure I'll cover in a video at some point about what I'm writing and, you know, things like that. I'll talk to you in another chat video about my writing life. But this book's amazing. I absolutely love it. It's actually uh, let me think. Yeah, this is probably the first proper horror book that I've read. No, actually, that's not true. I did read a manga horror book, which is a Japanese comic um, called Uzumaki by Junji Ito. And that was meant to scare me, but it didn't. Now, some of the pictures in it were a bit creepy, but it didn't quite scare me as much as I wanted it to. And I'm going to be honest with you. The Shining didn't scare me that much either, and I know it scares, um, scares a lot of people, but not me. But I found that while it did not necessarily, necessarily deliver in the scares, and, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The scares were well written and a bit creepy, but it didn't disturb me deeply. But as I was saying, while it didn't deliver on the scare level, it delivered on levels that I didn't expect it to. And that's character. Mr. King has this incredible control over the way he writes characters about the way that he makes you get to know them as people and really care about what they're going through. That's why I love this book so much, I think, because everything goes wrong at the end of this book. Everything goes wrong. 
everything that the characters want to happen just goes to hell. And if I hadn't cared about these, these characters, this family in this book, would that have impacted me? No, it would not. I wouldn't have given two dams if I, if if this if the characters weren't weren't so well written that you know this family was falling apart. But because of the time and Mister um that Mister King took as well as his skill, reading the end of this book really tore me apart. It tugged at my heartstrings to see these characters whom I loved and whom I knew loved each other turn against each other and you know, tear apart their relationships with each other. It was really sad for me. But that was a good thing, because that's the that's the first time I've really experienced something like that from a book. So that's one of the bookish things I love. Another bookish thing that I love is movies. I absolutely adore good movie adaptions. I'm not gonna, um, like, there are some bad movie adaptions that I've watched, um, of the top of my head. Dare I say The Shining? You know what, I'm gonna say The Shining. And I know it's a bit controversial. I know The Shining movie is a classic and it wasn't a bad movie. It was an excellent movie and that is one of my favourite movies, but was it a good adaption? God, no. It stuck to the very bare plot of the book. Literally, it took the setup and a few little moments from the book and put it onto the screen, but apart from that, it differs so vastly from the book, it almost bears no resemblance. That's not a bad thing, as I said, it's a good film. But as far as movie adaption as far as an adaption, not so good. On contrary, I knew, I said I'd talk about this. The adaption of the Shawshank Re I just dropped a bit mark, one sec. The adaption of the Shawshank Redemption, also by Stephen King was completely different. This was arguably one of my favourite movies. I'm going to talk about a lot of favourites in this video because this is called The Things That I Love. But, you know, this is one of my favourite movies and books ever made. Now, as an, it was a very hard book to adapt. Like, this, The Shawshank Redemption is told from the point of view of a character writing a letter to a good friend. And he's talking about um, he's a convict, by the way. He's had a life sentence in prison. He's talking about this man who he met in prison and the experiences that he had through him and the stories that were told about this man who was in prison called Andy Dufresne. And it was written in non-chronological order. The guy who is writing this letter, who's called Red, would dart across the timeline of Andy Dufresne's time in prison to uh, give you certain views of his mysterious character because Andy is very much a mysterious character and Red gives you different stories to show you different aspects of him and I thought there's no way they can adapt that very well but then they did quite contrary to all of my expectations they made a good movie out of this book it got across all the messages all the feels that I felt in the book and I loved it so if you're looking for a movie to watch Watch The Shawshank Redemption if you're looking for a book to read. It's literally only about 150 pages long. Maybe 200, let me tell you. Um, it's not even 150. It is 130 pages long, exactly. So if you're looking for a quick read, read the book. If you're looking for a good movie, watch the movie. Although I must say that the movie is rated 15. I don't know what the American rating for that is, so I can't say if I've got any American viewers. Although I doubt I have. It's for older children, and there's a lot of swearing, and a few violent scenes that could be a bit upsetting for a few people. But they're, they're happy films in the end. When you, like, at the beginning of the film, you might think, oh, this is sad, but then you get to the end and you feel really uplifted. So this is a definite recommendation. Both things, they're wonderful. Another bookish thing that I love is anime and manga. Now, here's an example. This is a box set for Full Metal Alchemist. There are 27 books in this series, so it had to come in this lovely box here. Now, what manga is, is like a Japanese comic book. I know I've already said that, but I might have new viewers, although I strongly doubt it, who don't know what manga is. So yes, it's a Jam Japanese comic book, which you read from right to left, and it's translated into English. 
And I don't quite know what the appeal is, although I have quite a few ideas, because I, I love these things. They're, they're so different to what I usually read, and that's partially because they're comics, not normal novels, but I believe it's also because they come from the East, from Japan, whereas most of the stuff I read is very much Western, you know, UK, USA. So the stories just have this flavour that is very different to what I'm used to, and that attracts me to them. And I'm not going to lie, you know, 27 books with different characters on the spines. As a collector, I can't say no to that. So it does tap into my collector's mindset a bit as well. And anime as well. What anime is is a Japanese cartoon which adapts a manga series. I love that as well because they are usually really, really good adaptions. Like um, Attack on Titan, which is one of my favourite an manga series. It's a great anime as well. For Mr. Alchemist, there's two adaptions. Um, one that's book accurate called For Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and another one called For Metal Alchemist, which is not completely book accurate. And both of them are really good in their own ways. So, you know, you get a lot of these. You get a unique reading experience and a good adaption. What, what more could you want? Another thing that I love is not necessarily bookish, but I'll, I'll mention it here anyway because it's quite a big part of me. And that is musicals. In my last video was a Hamilton book tag, and I did say there that I love musicals. You know, my favourite is Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, which tells the story of a barber who is sent to prison by a judge who wants to basically steal his wife. And he comes back many years later to find that not only is, is his wife dead, but that this judge who has wrongly accused him and sent him to prison so that he can take his wife has adopted his child so you know he's a bit peeved by that and decides to go on a murderous rampage around london yeah but it's amazing the music is absolutely amazing it's made by a, a guy called stephen sonheim you've probably heard of him he wrote into the woods as well and it has a lot of emotional punch to it it really does because like in the shining at the end of sweeney todd everything goes wrong and do i say it yeah most of the characters die so it's not a happy musical but it really it's one of my favorites but I, i'm not sure why it's probably the music and the story is enthralling even if a bit dark but i absolutely love well thing. i'll talk about my favorite genres so i stick predominantly to the fantasy genre but I also like a bit of horror because of Stephen King. You can see all along here I have some horror books that I haven't read yet and that will probably be on my To Be Read next month because it is spooky season, people. So I'm quite excited for that. But I also like manga, as I've said, and a bit of mystery. I've got Agatha Christie up here. I've been talking about her a lot lately and the next video will be a review for one of her books, as I said. I like science fiction as well, although that can link quite closely into fantasy. And I don't like Frankenstein. This is meant to be an I love video, but you know what? I'm going to talk about Frankenstein because it's pretty important. It's, um... Here it is. Now, this is... I should release a rant for this book. Okay, after Audio by Innocence, the review for that, I'm going to release a rant about Frankenstein, probably. No promises, I might have a change of heart before then. But this is a, considered to be an all-time classic. And I can admit this is pioneering as a work of science fiction. It asks good questions, it introduces, you know, some new stuff to the genre, but I... Is it fair to say I despised it? Yes. I despised this book, and I suppose you'll find out why next week. But I hate this thing. Anywho, that will be the end of the video, and I'm so sorry that it's been a bit weird. But I thought, why not just talk to you? Now, I'd love it if you would leave a comment in the comment section below about you know stuff that you like and we could have a bit of back and forth i could recommend things to you you could recommend things to me because there is i've only scratched the surface in this video really so yeah feel free to talk to me okay so that's me thank you so so much for watching 
and you probably didn't get this far, you know, it's just me geeking out about books. But if you did, well done, thank you, and have a good one, y'all. Bye.